When did you retire? 2004. Okay, so I retired in 03. You retired in public affairs. Yeah. yeah my last my last job was the uh, deputy chief of public affairs for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers up in D.C. Yeah. Okay. I've got a really good friend who works. He's uh, there now. I, yeah, he's an IG with the Corps, so okay, he okay. Spends a lot of time traveling. So after I retired from the Marine Corps, I spent four years at uh, National Guard Bureau. We were a huge team. I mean, we were a huge team. I was sending people on the road. All the time. I started in their plans division, and the first tasker was, hey, let's build a rapid response team. Because I started right uh, just before Katrina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right after Katrina, we stood up some rapid response teams, and but they're like, hey, you know, can we, can we get some more Marines here? Hello, and welcome to another edition of Equipping the Corps. DOD and the United States Marine Corps believe in the potential for small businesses to provide innovative solutions to meet the needs of our future forces. Small businesses fill critical manufacturing and industrial base gaps and are key contributors to the modernization of the defense industrial base. Many innovative ideas have been born in small shops and offices of the small businesses. Therefore, it is one of the reasons the Marine Corps believes in the potential for small businesses to provide innovative and sometimes revolutionary solutions to meet the needs of our future forces. Increasing small business participation is beyond just meeting statutory goals. It is critical to our national security and ultimately key to equipping the warfighter. So today I'm happy to have Austin Johnson or AJ on the podcast to discuss how small businesses can work with the Marine Corps. AJ is the director for the Command's Office of Small Business Programs and a retired Army veteran. Of course, I won't hold that against them. AJ, thanks for being with us. Before we dive deep into small businesses, uh, how long have you been with the Command? Well, Manny, first off, I just want to thank you for the opportunity. Uh, it's, it's been great here. Um, as of 1 November of this year, uh, I've been with the Command now for 17 great years. Oh, wow. In, in fact, I started out my civilian career in this very office uh, in corporate <laughs> communications. Uh, back then, of course, the team was about 18 strong, and now I know you're working with... Uh, I'm lucky probably. to be at five strong. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, I know you have your work cut out for you, but uh, but from where I sit, uh, you, you're doing a fantastic job. You and your uh, team. So keep up the great work. I appreciate the, I appreciate that. It's 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 the people on the team, not necessarily me. But I'm fortunate. I have a great team, uh, and we 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 do what we can to support uh, support the command. Uh, let me tell you before we get started. What's the role of the office of small business? I mean, what's What's your main mission in life? Well, you know, I tell you, um, that's an interesting question because, uh, as I said, when I left um, the corporate communications team back in 2011, it doesn't seem like it, but that's been 10 years ago. <laughs> and uh, I went over to the Office of Small Business Program. At the time, it was one person there, mm. uh, there a guy by the name of Dave Dawson. And uh, I really didn't know a whole lot about small business, but what I did know is that that office needed um, a strategic communications func function there mm -hmm. to make sure that we were doing outreach to small businesses to attract the kind of businesses that we want to do business with here in the Marine Corps. And so the role of the uh, OSBP or the Office of Small Business Programs is simple. We advise the command and we advocate on behalf of small businesses. In our advisory role, we advise the senior leadership on small business policy and regulations and we support more than 200 contracts specialists and supported program managers who manage more than 400 different programs to ensure that small businesses are considered as the first option and not the final option to receive contracts when their capabilities meet the requirements. As a small business advocate, I see myself as a mediator between small businesses and the government. Although we can't award contracts in my office, we can advocate on behalf of the small businesses to the people that do award the contracts so in a nutshell, that's my role. Well, that's quite a bit. I, and I think what I'd like to do is to take small pieces of that at a time and, and maybe focus in on a couple of areas. I, you discuss having a strategic communications part of small business. And I think uh, some of the folks that are listening may, may, uh, may be interested in the fact one of the challenges that small businesses often have is how do I get my message across? How can I 
you know, how can I do business with the government? So, you know, from a, uh, I would assume from a strategic standpoint, that's kind of the message you, you're often asked to deliver, uh, how you can open doors for them to come in. Is that correct? Exactly, exactly. Uh, one of the things that I always advise small businesses is before you approach Marine Corps Systems Command or any buying command for that matter, do your research, do your homework, because if you come in trying to sell us um, trash bags, when what we really need is ammo, then you're already off to a bad start. Right. And so right. what we always advise small businesses is to go out to our websites, uh, do research, find out the types of services and products that we buy so that when you um, come to the Small Business Programs Office or even the Office of Public Affairs and Communications, mm -hmm. wanting to set up a meeting with a member of the leadership team or a member of the program management teams, that you can have a meaningful engagement if you've done your homework. So, uh, a, a great bit of advice, I, I, I would say, because uh, there's nothing like having somebody come in trying to sell you a widget and you weren't looking for a widget, you're looking for some something else uh, completely different. Uh, along those lines, I, you know, we, we have a lot of established contracts, small business, large businesses. One of the challenges that often small businesses at time face is the ability to get on board those larger contracts. Is that something that you help navigate uh, with a small business? I think the short answer there is yes. Okay. Um, one, of the, one of the biggest challenges for small businesses is they... they um, they're a lot more accessible and they're agile, but a lot of times they just don't have the capability to, to um, produce the large uh, equipment that let's say Marine Corps uh, would use. Right, right, right. I mean, you, you develop a great capability in your garage, but how do you take that to the assembly line? It, it, exactly. Is that a good analogy? It, it, exactly, and, that's, and there's always a push. There's always a push to get more small businesses involved in the manufacturing piece Small businesses do great at um, at remanufacturing or distributing, but to manufacture those, um, whether they're rep uh, repair parts, spare parts that contribute to the the uh, the vehicles, the ground equipment, uh, the IT systems that we require within the Marine Corps, a lot of them have been hesitant to get into that, and it's because of their size. A lot of times. It's an issue of just starting out uh, new into the um, into the government space, mm -hmm. and so it just takes some time. But over time, uh, and I could give you a number a number of examples where. So we'll get into the nuts and bolts of all that in a little bit. No pun intended, but <laughs> you know maybe some of those nuts and bolts do come from small businesses. But let me back you up a second. So obviously there are other small business offices within DoD. What makes you unique, and and or do you collaborate with all of them? Is this something we do on our own? Well, it's interesting you ask that, Manny, because <clears throat> collaboration with other small business offices within DOD and throughout the federal government is probably probably my favorite, albeit the most important part of the job. Uh, I love networking and interacting with other offices uh, to come up with best practices to better serve our small business partners. Um, even within the Department of the Navy alone, um, there are 10 other buying commands with separate and distinct small business offices. Although all those ten, uh, all those ten buying commands have their own small business offices it, it, within the Navy. Exactly, exactly. And within you're the Marine Corps, you're not putting in a you're not putting a bid to get more people in the Marine Corps small business, are you? Within the Marine Corps, we have two small business offices: okay. uh, Marine Corps Systems Command, and then Headquarters Marine Corps Installations and Logistics. Oh, okay. okay. And so, um, but within the Department of the Navy. Those 10 buying commands, we always collaborate because sometimes I'll get small businesses that are interested in providing spare ports for aircraft, and so right, I can refer right. them to Nav Air. Right. If I get someone who has something that can contribute to our um, littoral combat ships, then I can refer them to Nav C. And right, so right. I always tell businesses, small businesses, I'm never going to turn you away because if there's something that you can't help us with, I guarantee you, you can help one of our other, uh, one of the other ten buying commands within the Department of the Navy. So, uh, nice segue into one of the things that I want to talk about. You uh, recently, uh, last year, you all released a uh, a small business strategy uh, with the initiatives focused on supporting the Commandant's planning guidance. Obviously, improving small business points of entry into the Marine Corps market and prompting. Uh, 
uh, coordinated outreach, small businesses. Can you tell us a little bit about the strategy and how those efforts are going? I, I, I know it's probably a little early in the game, but uh, what's the feedback on that? Well, Manny, the strategy that we publish each year is a fluid document, um, meaning we have the ability to adjust it on the fly in situations such as the current pandemic that we're operating in. Um, we posted our FY2223 um, small business strategy back in December. Right. And what that has done is enabled us to support the Commandant's planning guidance even more. Mm -hmm. The key to a successful small business strategy, however, is gaining the buy-in and the support of the senior leadership and the cooperation of the contracts and program management teams. And so far here, here in the command, we've been able to do that. And so kudos out to all of those program managers, contract teams who really, really believe in the small business strategy that we have. And oh, by the way, um, in FY21, we met all five of our small business goals for the first time in the last three years. Well, outstanding. Congratulations. I know we, we had the uh, General Pasajan was on here a couple of months ago and, uh, you know, he, he was hammering home the importance of small business. So uh, that's fantastic. Congratulations on on meeting all those goals. I, I guess the, you know, you set the bar up high. Are you on track to uh, do the same thing again this year? We're, we're trying to we're trying to pull a double this year. So hopefully we will. <laughs> uh, and, and then you'll shoot for that hat trick three for three. There's been a lot of discussion recently that while more defense dollars are going to small businesses, the pool of small businesses receiving these dollars is, is shrinking. Have you noticed that trend or is that something you look to overcome? Yeah, unfortunately, Manny, the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on small businesses was unimaginable. Some reports have stated that around 40% of small businesses went out of business. And while they're slow to return, uh, some of them may not return at all. Have we seen that impact here to the command? Uh, of course. A lot of the businesses that we have, I, I know we've we've heard some things from some of the other program managers on uh, small businesses who've had some challenges delivering products. Are are we still encountering that from your perspective? We are, but you, um, you know the good news um, and those you know those businesses that were able to survive the pandemic, the good news for them because I'm constantly talking with them is there's plenty of opportunity and because of the current administration's push to increase opportunity and dollars awarded to small businesses, the road to recovery has already begun. And so a lot of the small businesses that are right outside our gate, uh, for instance, uh, and you and you know most of them, uh, they are really, really uh, beating our doors down because they realize uh, the impact of some of the businesses that had to go out of business during the pandemic. And so they're taking advantage of those opportunities that have now uh, become available due to businesses going out. Now, um, here again, the good, the good news is, I believe some of those companies will be able to at least employ some of the uh, employees of businesses that went out of business, which means they're gonna be adding jobs back to our economy. And ultimately, as the economy recovers, I think more small businesses will be started because here, here again, I mean, small businesses is what fuels our economy. Right, right. They create 95, <clears throat> 90, you know, 95 percent of the new jobs each year, and so small businesses are 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 cropping up all over the place each year. As far as those small businesses that are best in best um, in the best position to support us here at the Marine Corps Systems Command, what we have to like you like you just alluded to, what we have to really really keep track of is. Are they able to provide the types of services and products that we need to get into the hands of our warfighters? So that's an interesting question. I mean, we're constantly talking about, and you mentioned services, but we're constantly talking about uh, procurement of capabilities and things. Uh, but can you touch a little bit on the diversity of things that small businesses provide? I mean, I, you know, I understand equipment, but you mentioned services. So is that is that something that small business provides us as well? Most of the services um, that small businesses will provide is not particularly to the warfighter directly. Correct. But most of our service contracts are awarded to small businesses who support our 2,500 member workforce. Oh, okay. okay. So within the so a lot of the so are we talking you know engineers, logisticians, those things that are those uh, the the support you're referring to. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Engineering services, program management support, um, you name it. Um, 
anything that a 2,500 member organization would need. We need right. training. We need financial management support, human resources management, any of those service uh, support contracts. We try to we try to push most of those into our small business because DOD as a whole, out of the DOD budget, which is in billions of dollars, about 60% of it goes to services contracts and about 40% goes to equipment. I guess this would be a good a good time to explain uh, for our listeners the fact that you know we have regular programs, but as a capability or a program is going through its life cycle. Uh, there may be an increased need for, for instance, early on in a program, we may have an increased need for engineers because we got to do a lot more engineering to get this program to where we need it. But a year or two later, that may transition to a more a greater need for logisticians because now we're fielding. And so we got to help that process along. So I think it's important to, to get our folks, you know, get the audience to understand that, uh, you know, it ebbs and flows and so we it's not like we can go out and turn this 2500 workforce into a 5000 uh person workforce that we would have to lay off from time to time because there wouldn't be enough work for them to do exactly. uh, so I, I just wanted to make sure we we kind of got that out so again I, I i think it's critical uh, small businesses provides us a service the ability to provide us uh, that workforce when we need it, when a program needs to kick off and, and have a strong workforce to be able to, to do all the engineering or, or, or other things that happen through the program life cycle. Um, does that, does that make sense? Of course, of course. Right. And, you know, and what I've seen, um, in my 10 years here at Marine Corps Systems Command is that, um, especially the large, what we call, um, uh, ACAT one uh, programs. Right, right. When uh, when those um, when the initial fielding is done, when the uh, when the full rate production uh, kicks in, small businesses are able to uh, jump in at the beginning, and throughout the life cycle, mm. there are things that they can do, uh, which really really helps those large primes to meet their subcontracting goals. Uh, DOD when they award these multi-million dollar contracts to large primes, uh, what they um, what they are really, um, really, really stressing upon the large primes is that a large percentage, and when I say large, I'm talking 20 to 30 percent right, right. of that is subcontracted out to right. small businesses. So they, ha they have goals themselves that they've been encouraged exactly. to meet by DOD. Exactly. And uh, the reason behind that is, so that we, uh, especially in lean times, that we're still able to maintain a strong industrial base. Because if we don't subcontract dollars down to small businesses, and then, like I said, they end up going out of business, then the very time that we need them to ramp up, if they're not there, then that puts, um, that puts us at a... Well, it was interesting. Base. You talk about lean times. I mean, we, we ourselves have looked at some... I know part of the Commandant's planning guidance is really to ensure... Uh, efficiencies, more efficiencies. So uh, ultimately, we're reducing the numbers a little bit on the on the active duty side. Probably also going to reduce the numbers on, you know, the acquisition side uh, of of you know this twenty five hundred workforce. We 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 may take a bit of a reduction. So there's an opportunity for small businesses to really step up in the, to the plate, fill in the void when we need it. Uh, and as we were talking about, as a contract or as a program is going through its life cycle, uh, there may be peaks and valleys where people need to jump in and fill a void where it's at. Uh, in addition to support contracts, what are some of the other businesses that uh, that the Marine Corps is looking for over the next couple of years? Do you do you anticipate? You know, I would think that um, you know small businesses who are operating in the areas of cyber. Uh, okay. Cloud migration, um, modeling and simulation uh, will be in the best position to help our warfighters. Now, uh, in addition to that, when we talk about you know effectiveness and efficiencies, those contractors, um, those small businesses that can uh, help us in the areas of uh, data analysis, mm -hmm. uh, big data, uh, those other areas, um, some of which I'm not as familiar with. I, with, with myself, and, and, you know, I'm glad. I'm glad. I, I'm glad our command has a chief technology officer. Right, now, right, right, right. Uh, because I lean on him very heavily when it right. gets to the technical side. Um, but uh, 
there's a number of areas where small businesses can help. And um, in every opportunity that we have, uh, I, I encourage them to do so by engaging, by engaging right. program managers, by in, engaging our engineers, our, um, our technical experts within the command to find out, even if it's something that they're not currently doing, to find out um, where in the next five to 10 years um, the focus is going to be, where they can be in the best position to help us to equip our warfighters to win. You know, it's funny you mentioned uh, cyber and, and obviously the IT world, which uh, we here deal on on, uh, on a regular basis. But it's uh, those are both areas, the respective areas, that change daily, literally. Um, and, and I know that's probably a, a niche market where a lot of small businesses come up with creative solutions to sometimes very complex and difficult problems for us. Uh, so I, I, I would agree with you. I mean, I, I think the, the future for cyber or anything related to that is going to continue to be a growth industry, uh, not just for the private sector, but, but for us as well. So we, we talked a little bit about the, the strategy and, and the, you know, the, the, the cross uh, conversations that you have with other, with the other small business offices and what not across DOD. Uh, are there opportunities or events that you create or opportunities that you have to engage with these small businesses on a, on a larger scale? Well, in the past year or two, uh, you know, we've, we've done a lot of virtual events okay. uh, due to the p pandemic, but now we're slowly uh, starting to see a lot of the events that we were able to host or attend uh, start to come back in person now. So you talked a, a, a little bit about virtual. Can you, what was your experience with some of these virtual events and were they productive, do you think? I tell you, one of the things that we, um, that we were able to learn through our virtual events is that um, we were able to actually reach more small businesses. Okay. Not particularly touch because small businesses, don't get me wrong, they still like that face-to-face -face right, in-person right. meeting. Right. But from my perspective, as an example, when I have a virtual small business roundtable, I can have 25 to 30 businesses on the platform right. nationwide. Whereas when we were doing those small business roundtables in person, I would usually have 25 to, uh, to 30 small businesses outside the gate. Right. Now when right. we do them virtually, I can, I can have people joining in, businesses joining in from San Diego, California, Orlando, Florida. And so um, from that perspective, those virtual events have paid huge dividends. Even when we participate in other uh, virtual events like the government procurement conference, when that event is held in person, it's held at the D.C. National Convention Center. Right, right. And every agency in the federal government is there. Um, a small business could come in there. They could have 30 matchmaking appointments in one day. Wow. And so... When they went That's virtual, speed dating at its best. Exactly. <laughs> and when they went virtual, not only did you have companies that are located in the Northern Virginia, D.C., the National Capital Region, but then here again, you had companies all over the country that could, particip could, that could participate in virtual matchmaking. And, and speaking of virtual matchmaking, um, one of the key events that we um, that we're looking at hosting here within Marine Corps Systems Command is. Um, a small business symposium. We did one three years ago at the Fredericksburg Expo. Oh, okay. Yeah. I and if funding is available, um, the, uh, the executive director has given us the green light to at least start planning so that if the dollars become available, we would like to try to do one of those uh, late spring, early summer. Uh, and what we would be looking at is at least inviting at least 200 small businesses. They would have an opportunity to come out actually hear from all of our program portfolio managers, our, mm -hmm. our, our direct reporting program managers, hear the types of things that, if they receive the dollars, the right. types of things that we're going to be looking to put on contract out in the future. And so I'm really hoping that we could, um, that we could do one of those because um, um, in my time here in the command, and I'm on my fifth commander now, by the way, <laughs> each... Each, each commander has had an opportunity to host at least one of those right. small business symposiums. And so uh, we would definitely like to get another one in uh, so, before we change command. If so so if I could, I guess one of the, the things, you know, the pandemic's brought bad news and good news. You know, the bad news is we uh, it's it's a challenge for us to to do the face-to-face -face things that we're, we're comfortable and, 
and, and we've done for so many years. But uh, is it safe to say that at the same time, the good news is it's it's broadened your depth and, and reach uh, small business by doing all these virtual events. So you now have a greater foundation of, of uh, a greater pool to uh, reach from to get folks involved in what we're doing here. Uh, well, I think doing a, a, a personal event, I think more and more uh, businesses and companies are, are moving in that direction. A lot of the trade shows that we participated in the past, some of those are starting to, to creep up uh, a little bit uh, and, and are headed in the right direction. I know we're, we're planning to, to do a modern day Marine uh, in DC this year, that'll be in the May time frame. So I'm as, assuming you'll have an opportunity to to engage at that point in time as well. Exactly, exactly. And in fact, I look forward to that particular event as well, um, because one of the things that we've been able to do in conjunction with the Modern Day Marine Expos is play an active role in the advanced planning brief to industry. Okay. Um, yeah. We've had an opportunity to uh, to have a you know to have a to have a spot on the agenda so we could give our small business briefing to all of the same audience that the portfolio managers, the, the, the program managers, and the senior leadership gets gets a chance to brief. So that's a great opportunity for us. One of the things that I'm not 100% certain on, though, that we've done in the past in conjunction with the Modern Day Marine Expos is the Small Business Pavilion. Um, and what that, what that provided was an opportunity for all of the small business to assemble in the same area so that when senior decision makers are coming through the expo, they know exactly where the small businesses are located. And 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 also the small businesses were able to occupy, occupy a space on the main exhibit floor at a, at a little bit slightly less expensive price than the big guys. <laughs> so I'm not going to get into the price, but as somebody who has a uh, who has a hand, who may have a hand in uh, in some of the planning and whatnot, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do to to try and set that up. I'm, I'm sure it'd be a great opportunity, uh, uh, not only for the event, but also for uh, small business to participate. So hopefully we'll get more information on that. And obviously we'll get more information out to, uh, to the folks on that. Uh, but you mentioned a little bit on, uh, early on, uh, we were talking briefly and you, you gave some, uh, some advice on how the small businesses, uh, can engage with this, but can you just reinforce or, or, or emphasize what are the key critical communication elements that small businesses should focus on in order for, for them to get our attention? The, the, the main point of entry into the command um, would be our website. If you go to the small business website, um, and kudos to our um, Office of Public Affairs and Communications, that small business website uh, is completely awesome. It has so many different resources on it now than it did three years ago even. And so every time I have an opportunity at a matchmaking uh, session or when I'm out networking, I always try to get small businesses to go to our website. It not only has resources where you can contact my office or our program management offices, but even offices within the Department of the Navy, Department of Defense. And so once you go to our website, do your homework and then reach so out. So let's focus on that a little bit because I think you said some important things uh, at the beginning of the program. Uh, you know, I'm selling widgets, or you're looking to buy widgets, or I, I believe your example was if you're selling trash bags and, and we're looking for ammunition, it's probably not a good match. But if you're selling trash bags and we're looking for trash cans, maybe there's a start there somewhere. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and and that website is where you find out the types of things that we buy. But okay. the, the, key, the key thing, um, the key tab on our small business website is to contact us because when you click on the contact us tab, it gives you the small business an opportunity to fill out everything you want us to know about your business to include the types of products and services that you have. Okay. And once you hit submit, it automatically generates an email that comes to my mailbox. Once I receive the email into my mailbox, I add your information to my vendor file. So all my contract specialists, when they're doing their market research, they have access to it. I can build a distro list that when we're doing upcoming events, I can send you an invite. And so I would encourage all small businesses, whenever you go to our website, 
don't just browse it, but click on the Contact Us tab, fill out the form, and that lets me know the types of things that you can provide to assist us in, in supporting the warfighter. And if you're listening and uh, you get an email from AJ and Marine Corps Systems Command, please don't delete it. Uh, make sure you pay attention uh, because you've just been put on his distro list. Well, AJ, I really appreciate you making the time uh, coming here, telling us a little bit more about small businesses uh, and the critical role that small businesses play, uh, not just for the Marine Corps, but our industrial base as a whole. But before I let you go, there's something we do here at, at this program that I think it's a great part of the show. So with that in mind, we'd like to go to the lightning round. So here you go. You ready? It's some tough questions, so I hope you're prepared. What's your favorite vacation spot? Well, I tell you, on the East Coast, it's Myrtle Beach. Ah. On the West Coast, San Diego. Ah, okay. So you got two. I, I, I guess we'll let you go with that. Uh, my second question for you. What's a TV show, a book, a movie, or a podcast you'd recommend? I tell you, you know, I just uh, discovered about a year ago um, this podcast, um, and it's pretty new itself. It's called Becoming Disciplined. Oh. And, you know, the thing that really drew me to that is because um, I was at a point uh, in my life where, you know, I started trying to make some, you know, some self-improvement, you know, trying to lose a little weight, trying to become a little bit more disciplined in uh, my finances, become a little bit more disciplined in my eating habits, my workouts, and so. Um, so this is scary because those are all the things you just hit all my checklists. So <laughs> I, I, I'm in trouble, but I am going to have to look at that after uh, so, after we get done with. But it. but there's this there's this podcast, uh, Becoming Disciplined, hosted by um, uh, a gentleman by the name of Tony Aries, and mm. and uh, he works for the government, so he does wow. this in his spare time, <laughs> and uh, and uh, but it's it's fast it's it's, uh, it's fast becoming one of my favorites. Well, it's early on in the year, so those of you who had your your New Year's resolutions and you think you you weren't effective, here's a great opportunity to uh, you know stay stay focused and stay disciplined. Uh, if you weren't doing what you're doing now, what would you be doing? What would AJ be out there in the world doing? I tell you, you know, it's very very interesting um, that you asked that, Manny, because. Um, you know, when I retired from the military, I had given myself a 10-year timeline to do what I'm doing now. Okay. And then uh, I had made myself a promise that um, at the end of those 10 years that I would do um, something in the ministry. Uh, oh, okay. And when I say ministry, uh, doing something to help feed the homeless. Mm -hmm. uh, in our, you know, the, we, we have a homeless and hungry population that, that needs help uh, to do something to help feed the uh, and not and not overseas. Even within our own country, there's right, a need. Right. Um, and I would, you know, I would like to do something like that um, because I've been granted um, some of the greatest opportunities that, that you could imagine, both inside the military and outside. And uh, and so my goal is once I uh, once I hang up my spurs for good, as they say, that I want to give back um, by helping those who are less fortunate, um, feeding the hungry, uh, helping to provide uh, homes. Or the homeless, uh, particularly our veterans. And so I could see myself doing something like that um, during my retirement years. Wow, that's really great. Outstanding. And that's, uh, you know, it's funny you, you say that because, uh, you know, sometimes right outside our front door, uh, there's a need and we, we, we don't pay attention to that need. So uh, the best to you in that. Uh, and, and I hope you're extremely successful. Uh, the last thing, uh, it, it, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? I think, you know, probably because I've been around the Marine Corps for the last 17 years. Don't say invisibility. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I think it would, it would just simply be, uh, unquestioned loyalty. Okay. Be, because what I've, you know, what I've found is that, um, at the basis of loyalty is trust. That's... And you know when very well stated. When you know when there's trust involved, uh, loyalty, uh, the exchange of ideas, um, the uh, the you know the lack of fear, um, you know because that loyalty breaks down all of that, you know. Um, That's true. When I've had the opportunity to you know to 
to be on sports teams and to serve in the military, the glue that holds that team together is loyalty. Absolutely. And to me, if that, you know, if I could have any superpower, that would be it day in and day out. Well, listen, AJ, that's awesome. Again, I thank you so much for uh, making the time, sharing some of your thoughts with us. Uh, it's been insightful. Thank you for having me. Well, this concludes another episode of Equipping the Corps. I hope you've enjoyed our conversation today. If so, please take a couple minutes, leave us a review, subscribe, tell your friends about us. Till next time, Manny Pacheco signing off.